Welcome to Barnstable Today. I'm Nick Cortez. It was another great week of insight and perspective on our daily talk show, Barnstable This Morning. And it's time now to take a look back on some of this week's most interesting and informative discussions. Coming up on Tuesday, September 28th, the Greater Hyannis Civic Association will host a meeting at 7 p.m. at the Steamship Authority Building, which will feature members of CFAC and town staff who will be making presentations and answering questions relating to the November ballot questions on the proposed sewer expansion program. DPW Director Mark Ells will be there, and on Tuesday, September 21st, he was here on BTM, giving us an excellent overview as to why the town needs a better solution to wastewater management. Our, our environment is very sensitive to the things that we introduce to it. And, and in many cases, the systems that we have in place, Title V systems being one of them, don't necessarily remove the things that we need to remove to the level that they need to be removed so that we can protect this environment. And so that's a big part of what we've been looking at and what we are looking at. Um, a lot of confusion is, well, what are we trying to protect? Well, you know, the environment's big. Well, it's our, our drinking water, it's our ponds and lakes, so our freshwater body, mm -hmm. and then it's our saltwater body. And so that becomes a very complex issue when you start laying each of those layers one over the other, and, and so often people just want to compartmentalize that and say, oh, well, it's just uh, nitrogen loading to saltwater embayment. Well, no, the problem is much, or the, or the concern, the concern is much greater than that, and it is that it's public health issues related to how we get rid of these wastes. Sure. Secondly, it's uh, our public water supplies and what might get introduced to some system we have into those uh, water supplies. And then it's our ponds and our lakes. And so, you know, we need to look at all of those. One isn't necessarily prioritized over the other, though, from a regulatory standpoint, there's some there's much there's some clearer targets in certain areas than others and for certain contaminants than other contaminants so it, it is a complex issue but it boils down to the fact we live on a really sensitive um, very um, environmentally sensitive uh, piece of land here on Cape Cod and the more we understand the more we have the ability to protect it and that's what this whole effort is about. The Cape Town Plaza on Route 132 has thousands of square feet of vacant space that nobody's in a big hurry to fill, or so it seems anyway. But at a recent meeting of the Airport Commission's Finance Subcommittee, a developer expressed interest in buying the land and redeveloping it. It's an intriguing idea, but it's a deal that would be tough for the airport to pull off due to legal limitations, the current lease agreement, and the FAA, who in all likelihood would only allow the sale of the land to benefit the airport, not the town as a whole. That's according to Airport Commission Chairman Dan Santos, who joined us on Wednesday, September 22nd, to talk about the proposal. Uh, the FAA, federal government, gave the property to the airport uh, decades ago, and so there's some question as to if we sold it, whether or not uh, if the money would have to be directly used by the airport uh, or it would have to revert back to the federal government. Uh, it's unlikely that uh, any sale proceeds would just be put into the town coffers. Right. So, so the idea that, and maybe the public perception that, oh, I can't believe the airport commissioners are leaving this alone and uh, not considering this more deeply, you're taking money off the table, this could lower my taxes, that's kind of a misnomer at the present moment, right? Uh, uh, absolutely. So, and in, in the commission has uh, weighed in on this many times in the past and even prior, prior to my involvement that we have no interest in selling the property. It's a revenue-generating property uh, that helps uh, to operate the airport. How would you like to see all, all of this pan out? Is this going to be just kind of another idea that goes by the wayside, as uh, so many others have before it? Or is this something that's going to get a little bit closer attention this time around? Uh, as far as the Airport Commission is concerned, we are happy to sit down with the current leaseholder if they have ideas about improving that property. Uh, so I would encourage any potential developer to speak with that current leaseholder and come together uh, and, and come before us as a team for redevelopment. Obviously, we're very interested in, in having that property be improved, having it, uh, it, it be, I think it would be wonderful with our new terminal and new access road if we have a new, uh, 
Metro Plaza there, mm. which I think we're very supportive of that. It just has to be done uh, properly. The town is on the hunt for a new assistant finance director. The departing Anne Marie Ellis was an important contributor to the success of the town's consolidated financial operation, which utilizes the same staff to develop both the municipal and the school budgets. Such an operation is found almost nowhere else in the Commonwealth. And on Thursday, September 23rd, Finance Director Mark Milne explained to us some of the advantages of this unique system. Well, I mean, this is, uh, this is a good example with uh, Anne Marie Ellis' um leaving yeah we now have we still have a you know a staff in place that can provide multiple individuals who can continue to provide assistance um, to the school department in monitoring and uh, their current budget for fiscal year 2011 as well as assisting in developing the budget for the next fiscal year and just overseeing the day-to-day -day, uh, financial related operations of the school department um, you know prior to that, we, we we saw what happened, uh, you know, several years ago when we had a revolving door of uh, school business managers coming in and out of here. It was it was it was very difficult for the schools um, at any point in time to really understand where they were financially. Now, is anyone sort of suspicious that uh, somehow the schools will get the shaft as a result of this arrangement? Uh, I would have to imagine the answer is no, but uh, still, I think it's a question worth asking. No, I don't think anybody is, uh, is suspicious about that. If anything, I think uh, we've improved the level of services. Um, it, you know, I, I, th I think the account financial accountability and transparency of the school department's finances have, have improved over the years, and I've never received any complaints as far as the school department feeling that they receive less services than any other department. The Hyannis Youth and Community Center on Saturday, September 25th, will celebrate its first anniversary with an entire day of festivities for all ages. A day before the big birthday party, we talked with Recreation Director David Curley, who reflected on his first year at the HYCC. And what I enjoy the most out of it, Nick, and I really appreciate it because, uh, you know, I, living here and knowing the people, um, I, was, uh, I was very, very impressed on how the community, how the village embraced this new facility. Um, they really came together. We, we're seeing the young, uh, middle-aged, the elderly, and they're all here. They're all visiting us, and uh, it, it, it's what I uh, really um, was hoping would happen. It brings back days when everybody visited the Barnesville Little League, or they visited the Kennedy Rink in the morning. And uh, so we're getting a lot of that back, and they really appreciate it over here, Nick. There's so much to be proud of, Dave, and I wonder if you might be able to pick a couple of different things that you're most proud of in terms of accomplishments at the HYC over the course of its first year of existence. Well, we, um, you know, being in recreation, you know, it's all about the youth. It's all about uh, enhancing families and individuals, and, and so I, I, I love to see the parents bringing those three, four, five-year-olds come in and, and participate in those toddler programs, and I love uh, watching those kids uh, from next door at the school come over in the after school and, and participate in the game room and having a good time, smiling, laughing, joking, and uh, I mean, that's what recreation's all about, so I really enjoy that piece as far as uh, watching the boys and girls have a wonderful time over here. The HYCC First Birthday Bash runs from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. on Saturday. You can find a full list of events at the HYCC website, which you can access through the town's website at town.barnstable.ma.us. Incidentally, that's also where you can find all of the full-length interviews that we've featured on this show. Well, that's all for now. Everybody have a great weekend. I'm Nick Cortese, and we'll see you next time on Barnstable Today.